I really want Moose's take on this. A goal is the simplest way to fail. If you live your life based on a timeline of getting somewhere by a designated time, you are setting yourself up for disappointment. Both didn't know nothing about the music industry. But he taught me about like building a brand and how to stay And that's what you've done. That's the difference between yeah. you making music and building a brand. Yeah. People are going to be like, I don't know. I don't need to know my stuff. I just need to know how to brand stuff. You don't know. And matter of fact, you won't know everything you need to know if you're just starting today. If it is, we got to do this because that's where the money is. One, we'll never be happy. And two, we'll never make enough money if that's what we're chasing. When will it be? Will it ever be enough? Was popping, was popping, was popping. Welcome, Nikki and Moose. I'm Nikki. That's Moose. What's up, Moose? What up, y'all? And welcome to episode 91. <laughs> and on this episode, we're going to talk about is goals needed? Is it not? How to build a brand, right? Do we have a routine to greatness? And should we be chasing the content? Or should we be chasing the money? Moose, how are we feeling about this episode? Branding masterclass is all I'm going to say about this one. Y'all stay tuned. It's coming. Ooh, let's just get into this intro. Two kids from Queens, cut from a different cloth. Now joining forces, helping you to elevate your personal brand. Yeah, I'm talking about Nikki and Moose, bringing you a never before seen perspective into the mindset, the mentality, the behaviors, the driving force, but more importantly, the stories behind the people and brands that you know and love the most. And of course, shout out to all our audio listeners, our video viewers, we appreciate you. And of course, this episode is powered by Ecamm Live, an all-in-one live streaming platform that also is the reason for this whole podcast. You're allowed to do pre-recording. You are allowed to separate your audio so you can have the podcast vibes, audio way, and the video way, and have a highly produced show. So, Ecamm Live, if you want that, www.nickyandmoose.com slash Ecamm to get your 14-day trial. But, Moose, how are we feeling? Uh, man, other than the fact that we're recording on the day that the Yankees got no hit, I feel pretty good. Hey! I'm pretty good. Yeah, I was about yeah. to say... For those people who are not watching the video, he is wearing his Yankees cap. And he's been on this yeah. whole, if you're from New York, you either have uh, a Yankees cap or a Rock Nation uh, Plains one. He's been rocking the, the Plains one a little bit often. And so yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I had, I figured something was up. The Yank nah, the Yankees are killing it. But just it just so happens today, man, they got no hit, which is like, it doesn't happen. It's it's rare. So I'm I'm a little heartbroken at the the way they played, but they've been killing the game. So it's one game. I'm going to sweep it under the rug and keep moving. But yeah, now nah, the Yankees going to do something special this year. You heard it here first. Uh, June, what? This episode is going to come out the 28th. So let's just say, yeah, June 28th, Yankees going to do something special this year. Okay. You like it. There you it like is. It. I love it. You like it. I love come it. Come on. Um, I'm over here just trying to enjoy peace and clarity. You feel me? I'm just trying to kind of enjoy peace and clarity and realizing the things when you are intentional with, uh, I'll be, I'll be blown with it. When you're intentional trying to be smarter, you will be smarter. You will be smarter. That is not a bar. That is just a fact. It's just a fact. You will okay? be smarter. You will be smarter. You will understand. You know when I knew something was different? Let me tell you. I was doing my research and I was watching uh, Mark Zuckerberg in a interview with Tom Bilyeu. I think that's how you pronounce his name, right? And I was understanding everything. And if you know Mark Zuckerberg, he geeks out. I mean, geeks out in his talks, hence why we only get snippets of him. But he geeks out in a very intellectual way. And I was like, oh, I can follow this. 
is not as boring as before. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm getting smarter. There we go. I like this. I like this me. Oh. I like this me. <laughs> I like this new version. I like this me. You mean? But let's get into this episode. <laughs> so in my, of course, journey of getting smarter and clarity and everything like that, we're going to bring it back for the episode as far as uh, things that triggered me to think, right? Triggered me to think. And I saw this clip on Ellen, right? Which I think just re recently stopped, right? It was last yeah, I season, think that was last, her last season. Yeah, shout out mm -hmm. to Twitch, of course. Um, and they had Emmanuel Acho on the on the episode, and he said something fire. Now, if you don't know who Emmanuel Acho is, he has about close to a million followers when this is recorded. It could all change, right? Close to a million followers on Instagram. He was a former NFL player. He's an author. And people have been really seeing him around in some of his content called An Uncomfortable Conversation with Emmanuel Acho, right? Now, he says something about goals, which hit my heart because I... I get a lot of crap and even one of the um, cause Moose gives me really great advice and majority of it I take and some I, I don't. Right. But actually, no, this was based off one of his trainings and one of his peoples gave me this advice, not even him, but he triggered the person to say this. Right. It's like, yo, you don't like doing goals. I was like, nope, I don't I feel like it limits me. And this individual said, well, I feel like you would get to the next level if you did goals. I said, okay. All right. Interesting. Well, this is what Emmanuel said about goals. That goals are dumb because a goal is the simplest way to fail. See, if you set a goal and you don't achieve it, you ruin your self-esteem. You ruin your self-efficacy. Mm. I started to question, who am I? If you set a goal and you do achieve it, congrats. But what if you could have done more? d way we all do something like this. At 26, I want to be married. At 28, Twitch, I want to have kids. By 30, I want to own a home. But what happens when you're 31 mm. and you have none of those things? Mm. Now you start to question yourself. I no longer believe in goals. I believe in setting an objective with no limitations because a goal is an end towards which energy is aimed. But why in the world would I start something with the end in mind? I really want Moose's take on this. <laughs> it's super interesting, man. It's like, I think we're, uh, we're, we're in an era where a lot of what we learned is questionable. Mm. It's crazy. I mean, you've, you've heard people say, you got to start with the end in mind. I can, I can at least quote 10 different people who said, you got to start with the end in mind. Right. Now, he literally is telling you, why, why start with the end in mind? So I get the idea of not adding goals because it's true. So I, I semi-agree. In short, I'll say this. I semi-agree because for one, if you live your life based on a timeline of getting somewhere by a designated time, you are setting yourself up for disappointment. Because especially, especially if you're a believer or you believe in the powers to be, then you should know the creator's plan is going to overrule your plan. So you got to leave room for that, right? So the, the idea of being this by 25, this by 26 and a half, and that by 30, that can be disappointing. On the flip side, though, and he does speak to this, which I would have hoped he would have spoke to it in more detail just to provide context for everyone, which is you got to have an intention for your day. Yeah. You don't want to take this example to the extreme and say, oh, Emmanuel said no goals. I'm out of here. <laughs> See you later. You know, you Bump still, you and yeah, goals. I'm out of here. And in no your goals. goal setting. OK, right. right. No goal setting. I'm done. Bump you still, you and, and your goal setting <laughs> meetings. We're not, right. Why are we here? What's the first quarter right. meeting? Second quarter meet? Right. Get out of here. No. So. I will say you still got to have an aim or, you know, some level of intention for what you're out to do on a daily basis, on a weekly basis. It doesn't have to be ginormous where you're looking at your lifespan over in its entire cycle and saying this by this time, that by that time. And you're allowing those 
miniature points or those checkpoints to determine whether or not you should be happy or not, or whether you should, you're a success or a failure, it should still have those aims and objectives of saying, I want to, I want to get this done today. I want to see this happen. I'm going to pursue this here. Now, I do like that idea of, yo, leave your goals open-ended because what if you under, you know, what if you undershoot yourself or whether mm. if you, you set yourself up for something that is actually beneath your potential that, that I respect. I actually really like that. Okay. AKA. <laughs> okay. Still be- he still <laughs> believes in goals. <laughs> yeah. So, so for me, and the reason why I brought this, this one up was because I felt bad after a while that everybody, not everybody, I won't say everybody, because not everybody is going to come up to me and say, Nikki, you're wrong. Shout out to those who do. Um, I respect you for that. Uh, half the time I don't listen to you, but I respect you, right? Um, but I started feeling bad because you would hear all these things about goals, 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 goals. And I was more like, no, I I feel like when you set a goal, the job is done. Like, because there is never a doubt in my mind that myself or the people I'm around is going to meet these goals. I never have a doubt in my mind about that. So I don't necessarily need, like, do this and you feel accomplished, right? Do that and and there is a success in what you're doing and you've gotten everything. Like, I feel like... When, and it probably has to do with when I was younger, as far as was setting goals. And then I realized I leaned back and that was it. Like, wait, you told, you told me to get on a roll. You told me to do like, you want me to repeat it again? You want me to keep, continue to do this? This sounds like a, like a everlasting goal. This is not a goal. This is a life sentence. What are we talking Mm -hmm. about? Right? So. And then when I didn't get it, it was like, I was bad. So you're not going to remember the other times I've done it, but you're, and so for me, it's like, I can surpass these goals each and every single solitary time. That is more of a benchmark. That's not the final destination. So it, it was always hard for me is like, yo, what are your yearly and quarterly goals? I was like, why do I have to be limited to those first off time frames? Something I may really want is not going to take a quarter or, or a year, right? It may take longer. I don't want to feel disappointed because I don't, I didn't reach it within a year. So, and then the flip side of like, well, if you don't set goals, then you won't even get close to it. No, I just need to know what I want. What do I want? This is what I want. Okay, cool. I'm going to make steps closer, which is probably some people's goals, right? Where I'm more like, there is an unlimited amount of money I can make. There's an unlimited square feet of amount of house that I can have. You know, there's this type of car I could get, or maybe there's something that easy isn't even made yet that I can get that will be my dream car, right? I'm just Mm -hmm. super open-minded to to what possibly can be of what I do and what the team does and everything that I just was starting to feel bad that, oh, because I would go to some of these quarterly meetings as I'm joking, but this is a real life situation and be like, yo, what are your quarterly goals? What? I don't, I I have an objective. I have, I have to make this million amount of uh, uh, impressions and this, that, and the third. I don't know when that's going to take, nor do I want you to penalize me because I don't reach your standard of goals. Like, and from a workforce situation, I feel like goals are meant to either keep your job or punish you. Mm-hmm. And That's I right. don't, and I don't know if I like that. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if I, I, I vibe with that. And I think maybe that's the rebellious side of me 
of this is only for you. Goals are really only for you from a workforce standpoint. Now, personally, like I said, however you label your goals, because you could he, all he did was just put a different definition to it. Right. That's all he did. He just reworded it and changed the narrative. That's all really that is. So personally, I'm not talking about that. But from a workforce standpoint, I don't like it. So maybe it went into my personal life because from a workforce standpoint, I don't like it. You mm-hmm. sound like a little kid. Mm-hmm. 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 I don't like it. I don't like it. I'm just saying. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Okay. To eat your tongue. There it is. <laughs> Reach tone. Moose is like, yep, got you. All right, next topic. All right, my bad. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so next topic is going to be about how to build your brand, right? And there is one person. Well, we're going to go over two people in this section, but there's one person that we're going to start off with that one is pretty much family to us, two Um, has had an amazing couple of years. I'm not just going to say year, couple of years, right? Um, He just recently was at a festival that Pharrell uh, organizes and has a song with Pharrell, okay? Mm. Let's start there. Come on. That's major, okay? Um, Has over a million followers on Instagram. He's recently won an N, uh, what is it? Double A, yeah, double C, you know, double A, <laughs> that, that double thing. A, C, P, C-P M- image award. X, Y, Z, you. you know what I'm N-A-A-C-P, talking about. Yeah. N-A-A-C-P, double A, okay? <laughs> y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about, okay? Uh, deals out of the wazoo with like NBA 2K, Facebook. We're talking about none other than Toby Nuigwe. Yeah. Okay. And he's just built a brand that is unstoppable at this moment, right? Now, why is the question, why is branding so important? We have a clip. <laughs> CJ see me and like, like he low-key like gave me the game to like, Rapping, no, not at all. But building a brand, mm-hmm. he helped. Like he helped me understand like what it takes to build something from absolutely nothing. Right. Uh, and he did. Like we both didn't know nothing about the music industry, but he taught me about like building a brand and how to. Stay and that's consistent. what you've done. That's the difference between yeah. you making music and building a brand because yeah. brands last forever if yeah. you do it correctly. So, you already know that I love this topic, right? I love this topic. Um, so i am be honest. When Toby started making a lot of noise, I was so impressed with the content and the branding side of it more than the raps. Not to downplay anything of his early work or anything like that. I paid more attention to how is he making a presence more than the actual music. Cause I, I truly feel that if you build a brand and you build a brand that people see over and over again, we're going to like you somehow, some way we gonna have to see you. Like we turn on, on, on our phones, we go to YouTube, we go to Facebook, whatever. We're going to see you. If you brand yourself, right. Whether it's your own stuff, whether people are sharing it, whether you're on BET whether you're winning awards, whether you're going to festivals, like we're going to have to see you. And the fact, and shout out to CJ, love CJ, right? The fact that he said both of them, C and Toby, didn't know nothing about music. Mm. Uh, what to do as far as how to correctly do this music industry, but understood the foundation of branding really shows a lot as far as you don't necessarily not say you don't let me let me because people are going to be like i don't know i don't need to know my stuff i just need to know how to brand stuff no please know your stuff don't don't do that okay but it proves that you could be the 
best person in your industry, if you're not branded right, no one's going to know you. Like he has deals with almost everybody now because he branded himself right. He branded it not only from a music standpoint, but from a family standpoint. Like mm-hmm. he's getting money because of his values and his beliefs, right? And from everything from what he wears and how that's intentional from his visuals, everything is done with the foundation of branding. And of course, my man is is lyrically amazing. So don't don't ever think I'm thinking something separate. But you can only look and see that, okay, in the beginning, and and we're going to, I'm going, Jeff, I'm going to contact you. We're going to get Toby on Nikki and Moose, just letting you know this, right? Um, But in the beginning, we all know, if he didn't, he all started on his phone, right? And was just consistent with that. And then People came through, which we'll talk a little bit later. People came through and got his brand to a bigger situation as far as just a team, right? I I say that because you just have to start being consistent. You just have to start with, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this organically for a little bit. And then I'm going to figure out how to elevate the brand. I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do to who else do can I collaborate? What challenges? Because he got on a, a so far gone challenge. What challenge can I get that will get me in front of new audience? Like these all play a role of what we know of a brand. And if you get that brand part right, you get the bag. Like mm-hmm. money starts pouring in. Like people want to do business with you people want to support you from a from a merch side from a tech side from whatever you're associated with if you're a brand ambassador of something they want to buy whatever you're touching you know to then your own stuff it's but if you don't have that brand you don't really have anything because no one will know you yeah 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 the part the part that really stuck out to me was in the beginning, what you lack in knowledge, you can make up for in consistency mm-hmm. or with consistency. You know, like they, they told you, like, of course, CJ did have the experience and the resume of helping to bring up E's brand. So yeah. he, he does have some knowledge in the game and he's able to bring that info and bring it there. And, and for those of you who've heard C and shout out to C, by the way, he was on our podcast so make sure you go back and listen to that sure. uh he talks about he pretty much gave the exact formula that he used with e and gave it in to gave it to the music or with toby in the music industry and the the dna of it is consistency yep. so it just shows you that you don't know and matter of fact you won't know everything you need to know if you're just starting today, if you just started a year ago, two years ago, you're going to continue to learn along the way. But as long as you're consistent, you can make up for a lot of knowledge that you lack just by being consistent. And that is going to bring about the knowledge that you need to make whatever adjustments necessary. I'm making audible. We keep saying consistency. It wouldn't be right if we didn't talk about the routine part right after yeah. it. Yeah. So uh, since we talked about consistency, uh, let's let's hear what he has to say about that. And, and like you're intentional about what it is that you're doing. Like I didn't start off like where I'm at now, but every week, like forcing myself to write, uh, do a certain amount of punchlines, metaphors, all that type of stuff, and like trying to uh, be the best every single week forced me to get better. I put I, I put a routine in place for myself to where now I have to get better. I wanted you to continue. I wanted you to continue. Yeah, no, that's, I, I, I've been saying this for a little bit now, and I'm telling everyone, treat this like a job. You, and I'm, I'm not trying to say the bad parts of it, 
you know, the part that you may not like it and you have someone telling you what to do. But the fact that you are accountable to showing up at a certain time, there are certain tasks that you have to get done. You have to leave at a certain time. You may stay late whenever necessary. Treat that like a job. Every time that we look at entrepreneurship or creativity or brand building as an escape from having to work, your brand will not work because that very same thing is needed in branding and business to help you to achieve some level of success. So in the beginning, it takes that, what he's talking about there, that discipline, that consistency, literally having no routine to get those bad reps out of your way. I still go back to some of my old videos and I I can't stand maybe 20 seconds before I'm like, cut it off. It's so bad. It's so bad. Right. And I'm like, man, I'm so glad I got all of those bad reps out of me because there isn't an opportunity that I'm handed today that I feel nervous about. Oh man, what am I going to say? Or what if I mess up? Quite frankly, those ideas do not cross my mind anymore. Am I saying I'm the greatest? I'm not saying any of that, but I'm just saying all of my bad reps are behind me that I know that if I'm presented an opportunity, I can stand firmly on two feet and deliver on what's being asked of me. And still, after it's all said and done, look for things that I can do to to, to get a little bit better. But that doesn't happen if you don't get a lot of those things out of the way. Yeah, this reminds me, we went over it, man, I don't remember what episode, but it was the J. Cole one, right, about mm-hmm. the documentary and how he forces himself to rhyme like every single day, right? Force, he does this like five minute drill. And so what I loved about what Toby said was, you know, when you set a routine, it like forces you to get better. Mm-hmm. Um, especially with certain individuals, you get bored, like, the routine is going to get boring if there's no, if you don't evolve with it. Like you're going to, you're going to get bored with yourself. And if you're very serious about this particular craft or what you're doing or the brand that you're building, you have to intentionally every single day, what am I doing to get better? What am I doing to learn something new? What am I doing that is either going to level up my skills or level up my brand. You know, you have to do this every single day, if you're serious. Now, if you're not, or it's not a priority, yeah, there's no such thing as a routine when it comes to your brand. There's, there's, There's nothing of it. You are not doing something every single day, and social media isn't that. Just being on social media and posting is not just that. That's part of it. But you still have to build yourself skill-wise. You still have to build yourself visual, image-wise, every single day. And you may just have a consistency problem. Not that you're not talented. Not that your brand isn't going to blow up. But it's, you have a consistency problem too where you're not putting it a priority to be great. And it's okay, just be truthful to yourself. Yeah, I don't feel like I can put that much energy to being great right now. I'm okay being good or where I'm at right now. Just be honest with yourself. But if you're serious about your brand, if you're serious, yo, I'm going to be or I am the next best thing or the the thing right now what are you doing every single day in your routine that levels you up skill wise right and brand wise that's the only way we're going to get to know you there's there's competition everywhere everywhere, everywhere. you think of it it's done already Right. Mm -hmm. For the most part. And depending who is doing it, they may be branding themselves as the better one, even though you may be. I I say this all the time. There's a lot of trash out there. There's a lot of trash out there. Brands that don't make no sense. They're not really good. 
but because they do something every single day to get their brand out there to to work on their their products, their services, to work on their brand messaging and making sure they know how to communicate with everybody in their audience, not just one half or one type of people, everybody, they're winning out here. Why? Because they're being intentional. It's about yeah. being intentional to be great. It's about being intentional with building a brand. It's about it being intentional with just improving yourself. Because if you can't necessarily be consistent here, then you have an overall consistency problem somewhere else as well. It just, Don't look at it like, oh, I just can't be consistent growing this brand or, or social media. I can't be. No, you have a consistency problem, period. Because this is just a small leak mm -hmm. to something probably bigger in your life. Yeah. 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 No, that's important. That's important. And I think we have, uh, another clip that, uh, that speaks to, you see what I did there? You see I what see. I did there? I'm, 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 I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm like, where are we going? We have, uh, we have yet another clip that talks about another element or ingredient to making sure your brand stays on par to making sure your brand, you know what I'm saying? There's, there's a level of consistency, of course, and routine that's required, but there's something else that's needed. Now, let me set this one up, right? This is, uh, you see the hat first off. It's actually, it makes sense that I'm wearing this hat today, right? Uh, this man, by the way, did you know he recently joined Instagram? Really? Yeah, it was hilarious. Recently joined Instagram, got like 300,000 followers in a matter of weeks. It's you, just... You, you got the notification, didn't you? Of course, you know what I'm saying? The people I follow, I was like, <laughs> I was like yeah, I heck yeah. I definitely didn't get that notification. Yeah, I got the yeah, notification nah. when Jay-Z showed up for like a few hours and then left. Right. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah, right. yeah. But you, yeah. I know you definitely got that notification. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, nah, that was crazy. No, nah, but of course, man, if y'all know I'm a big Yankee fan, we're both New Yorkers. And uh, uh, the era is a Derek Jeter era. Like you, you, you know the name, whether you're a baseball guy or a baseball gal or not. So uh, Derek Jeter, uh, he actually has a documentary coming out on ESPN called The Captain. He looks over his whole life. So right now he's doing a good amount of interviews, just talking about his experience and his story. And he was on Deces and Mero uh, recently talking about what, he, what kind of advice he gives to people when younger players come up to him asking him how to grow a brand. Now, mind you, he came out at a time where Social media really wasn't popping like that. So check out what he had to say for this. A lot of young players coming up. How do I grow my, or grow or build my brand? Mm -hmm. Like what are you talking about? Win. Yeah. That's how you do it. You know, we came up, we won my first year. We won four out of five years. So every time, even if you're not a baseball fan, you turn on the TV in October, you see us. You see us. So if you win, I, I, it wasn't like I tried to force something. It's just we just happened to have good teams throughout the years. And we we're in the postseason most of my career. And I, I think if you try to force it, that's when you have issues. Come on, man. You heard the captain. I love this because it literally, t it literally is giving you the piece that a lot of people forget about when they think about making millions. Your road to riches, uh, all of that stuff is in you mastering something at a level that no one can compete with, that is, is just undeniably good. Are there other people out there going to be doing something similar to you? Absolutely. We live in a world with seven, almost eight billion people. We all have some things in common, skill sets, desires, whatever. Yeah, you, you will have people who are in your lane per se or doing things similar to you. But are you good enough that you can stand out and continue to progress? The last ingredient that I believe is going to be important for any brand is winning and activity. All right. Activity stimulates progress. You're constantly doing stuff. We talked about uh, Toby's example. I remember when I first started fo following Toby, he made a song about reaching 100,000 followers. And that was like the, the like, whoa, yo, Toby reached 100K. And, and people were, uh, it was a good song. Like we were actually gravitated to the fact that he reached this milestone on social media, made a song about it. And now you look at where he's at now and you can almost laugh at the 100K. Like, man, that was so long ago. But the beautiful thing about it is 
you're seeing the progress. You're seeing that he's continuing to win. You're seeing the activity that's been, that's, that continues to happen. So he never once maybe rested on, yo, I didn't win today, but remember two years ago, that time when I reached, right? And it's like, at some point, what you did before no longer qualifies you. You got to keep winning. You got to keep progressing. So, uh, yeah, I, I love that piece. I, listen, I ain't mad at that. that it, 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 it really goes towards the, just the basics. Like, you can't, you can't expect to be on the top if you don't actually have stats that back it up. Right? Like, yo, I'm the best. How? How do you know this? Mm. You know? Um, Jeter really had an amazing brand, especially with the Jordan situation, um, the merchandise, everything. I, I even think the the baby tilting the hat at the end. Yeah. Like, that just became his brand, too. Right? Yeah. Um, and it all because of his accolades. It's all because of how many times he won. Right. And you can't deny a great brand. You can't deny greatness. If the stats show, yo, all I do is win. Literally like show me other brands that have this type of, of stats that are in my industry and then give them the same deals if they have. But if not, you got to you got to respect what I'm doing because I'm consistent. Every time you turn on my stuff, you hear Yankees, you you see who the stars of the Yankees are. And I'm one of them, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so it is it is what it is. You can't deny numbers. You can't deny stats. Now. That's that's the basic part, right? That's the basic. Now, it still goes back to sometimes that isn't enough, right? Mm. Because, okay, there are... Now, granted, you could be on a winning team right. and still nobody knows you. That's a fact. Right? You can be on a winning team, still nobody knows you. So if you're on a winning team, that's where the branding comes in. How are you mm -hmm. leveraging that, that energy, right? Because some people, I'll say this, some people are not like stars per se, right? Yeah. Uh, from a talent-wise, skill-wise, they're not necessarily stars. Like, I'm thinking about some of the the people that I follow. I know their skill level, their uh, the the way they do things is not top tier. I know that for a fact, though. Mm -hmm. However, they've branded themselves so well that you even question what they're saying. Like, wait, I know that's wrong, but. Is it to the point where it's like, that's their formula, but this is your formula? Like, it made you question because of how much authority they've put based off their brand, not based off their talent, not based off their wins, based off how they branded themselves, right? Yeah. So there's two sides, I always feel, to this situation of, like, growing a brand, but... From a basic standpoint, absolutely. Please win. Please continue to show stats. Please show us what you can do on a consistent basis that, that it's undeniable that we have to, you know, crown you king or queen of, of that particular industry, that particular sport, whatever you do. But even if you are not on the winning like, it, even if you're not the star of the winning team, but you are on the winning team, leverage the momentum, mm -hmm. leverage, like, 
there are, man, uh, there's just people that if they play their cards right, can be okay with being number two, right? I'm, I'm always big on that. Like, I think we, we try to go for number one all the time, right? Just maybe competitive spirits or whatever. Um, people are still going to say your name in number two. Yeah. You know what I mean, like, yes, people look up to all, but for some reason, I'm respecting a lot of the people that are top 10. I'm respecting a lot of the people that are top five, you know, top two. Reason why, and I think because of my research, is there's always a a struggle of success. And this is going a little bit off topic, but bear with me, right? There's always a struggle of success. You always hear the people who are on the top having targets on their back, right? So here's the pros and the cons of being at the top. But number two don't always have the target. Number mm-hmm. three don't necessarily have the target. They have the, the, the fame, per se, the popularity. They still have the money per se or whatever, but they're not the number one, but there's not that much target on them. Right. So I look when I'm doing my research, I'm, I'm looking at these people a little bit different. Cause I'm like, yo, you're winning. Like mm-hmm. you, you have to stay up there and maybe you're naturally doing it. Maybe you're not, but you're, you don't have that pressure of supposedly people coming at you in different ways. Like I'm listening to the Chris Brown. Uh, that was, mm, Oh, you did like, talk I, about that. Right. Yeah. I was like, I know there was a clip I was supposed to get. Okay. We'll, we'll do it next week. Right. But, uh, I, I was listening to Chris Brown and, and him talking about like the, the young, the young gunner. Gunna and and Young Thug situation, and he was just like, "Yo, when we're on the top, we have targets." Like, mm-hmm. and if you don't know about it, look it up. And I'm not going to get too deep into that, but Gunna and Young Thug are high up elite rappers at at this moment um, from the ATL situation. But he's like, "Yo, we always have targets. So regardless, people are going to come after us." I'm walking around and I have a target on my back, you know, why? Because we're number one, we're we're, we're just up here. So I'm like, you know what? All right. Y'all want to, y'all want, y'all want to be number one. Y'all want to be the, and then that's cool, but be ready for those problems. Yeah. Be ready. Yeah. Be, be ready to be a target. And don't feel discouraged when you're not number one. Like people are living good top 10 uh, of their industry that doesn't affect their money. That doesn't affect, like they're still good. I'm, I'm, I'm always aiming for number one, always aiming. And I believe it in my heart that I'm that, but if in other people's lists, I'm not, I'm okay with that because at the end of the day, it's about who I am here. Like I'm number one in my industry. Say something different to me. I don't believe you. Now who I am on your list. I'm okay with that because maybe on your list, I'm not a target. Praise God. Mm. Thank you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know how we get this left. My bad. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No, we're just talking about the different ingredients of a growing brand, a winning brand. Of course we talked about, consistency, discipline, routine, uh, winning, right? Mm-hmm. And now we're talking about you can win by not always being number one per se at something. And believe it or not, I actually think a lot of number twos enjoy a better lifestyle than number one. You know, like I think about a lot of the number ones and the stuff that they got to go to uh, or go through and travel and all this stuff. And I'm like, man, I don't want that. There was a season where I thought traveling was cool, yeah. but you spend enough time on the road and I always complain about two things, shower and, and my bed. I'm like, man, if I can't shower in my shower and sleep in my own bed, 
for long enough, I'm like, screw everything. I, I don't care. Oh, you must I have take an back immaculate home. shower then. You must oh, have I do. Do. Yeah, the showers is definitely my uh my go to. I ain't mad at that because I really like the hotel showers. Some 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 of those hotel showers uh, be crazy though. Like amazing crazy. Like I don't wanna leave kind of crazy. Like why why am I in the shower for like 40 minutes? This is a little bit too much for me. But that's cool. That's all right. Anyways, uh, shout out to the good showers. Shout out to the good showers. I'm here for it. Um, look, we got one last clip. And uh, based off our numbers, you, you love when we talk about the Pivot podcast. Uh, uh, I th- we've been following the Pivot. Did you know? They started five months ago. Really? Did you know that? Well, I know. I know it happened after the whole the whole split or mis- misunderstanding there. The, but that, it's been that only five video, months. That video, the truth, came out five months ago. They have wow. about five million views on their YouTube, right? And for those people who don't know what the Pivot Podcast is, um, real quick backstory. Uh, I am athlete podcast or show, whatever you want to call it. Right. They had a breakup. We covered it on, on the podcast. So go check out, you know, past episodes, but the two people that left, uh, Fred and Channing teamed up with Ryan and they created the pivot podcast. They explained what happened, but then they got in this whole groove of like amazing interviews. We've covered the pivot po- podcast uh, yeah. interviews several times. I feel like we should be an affiliate with them as well, but um, they just have a really great run. And I believe I'll, I'll say this is my opinion. I believe it's better than I am athlete right now with the conversation and the guests that they have, but that's just my opinion, not no shade. Cause I listen to both still. But I I really like the vibe and the conversation that the pivot is having. And I love seeing the success that they have. Like you would think like we've seen a, another podcast break up and it got quiet in a certain section, right? Now this one, it's like both of them are still thriving. And I love that, that mm-hmm. both are still doing very well. Like not one is being hurt by the other. There's not really right. shade or anything like that. I love that both are really still doing their thing. But I was looking at their stats. Their first their first video was five months ago. And I feel like they've made a huge impact in this whole mm-hmm. situation. I don't I, let me get before we get into the clip, let me get your your opinion on on the pivot podcast no i love it i love it i um uh, i appreciated what they did because it could have been very easy especially for uh fred and channing who weren't podcasters yeah. or in the media game at all really so for them to stay and or come back and say you know what we're gonna carry on because we feel that we have almost a responsibility to the next generation, regardless of age, people are actually tuned in and listening. And because typically, and this almost goes along with the conversation we were just having. Typically when a split happens, the two man rarely jumps up to become his own number one, right? Or you try, but you don't have the same level of success. You might doubt, you might say, I'm more comfortable in this role. I don't know that I necessarily want to jump out and be the limelight or the, the face of something. And the fact that they've done that and carried through is phenomenal. And then, of course, like you said, they've had some really good interviews from Floyd, which we've covered, A-Rod, a few others. So they've had some 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 really dope conversations over there, too. Yep. And so they recently did an interview on The Breakfast Club. And knowing their their background with, you know, the some of the, I would say, defects and flaws of their prior uh, agreements, right? Which mm-hmm. is, of course, one of them was money. Um, 
they said something, actually Ryan said something very interesting about what's more important. Is is the money more important or is the content more important for them? And this is what he said. We make good content. If we treat people the right way, eventually you'll make money. That's right. But if we're not focused on making the best content and putting out the best show, if it is, we got to do this because that's where the money is. One, we'll never be happy. And two, we'll never make enough money if that's what we're chasing. Mm. Now, I, I think, and there's nothing wrong with chasing money. Let me put that out there, right? Though money is not important, like from a, from a list standpoint, is not the top of my list of you have to focus on money, right? Yeah. But I, but I am aware with money, you are able to impact and do a lot of things and have options, things like that, right? I'm very aware of that. Um, with me stating that, I feel as if if you continue to focus on money, are you ever going to be fulfilled? With inflation, with new toys, technology, all these different things, you're going to find, you're going to live a lifestyle that's going to always make you want to have more money. Mm -hmm. And if you chase and continue to chase it, do you get drained? Like, and that's, that's just a legit question for those people who like are, is only there to chase money. Now, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm team content, um, team serving. If you, if you serve the people and you give it away and you concentrate on just creating really dope content, not even highly produced or anything, just really dope content, everything that you're asking for is coming to you, right? Everything that from money to popularity, if you want that, uh, peace of mind, that's coming, like, Whatever you want, because content is a way of serving the people. I believe that. That's in, that's in my eyes and in my world. This is something that you give to people for free that is helping somebody, improving their thought process, or motiv motivating them in some way, shape, or form. And mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. by you serving the people, it's, it's reciprocity. So though money is important and we need to pay the bills and we need to um, have this to with this gas prices the way it is. Shout out to me never really driving anymore to really even feel that, you know, but whatever um, to to house the the interest rates going up. Everything is just going up. So money you need. But I don't believe in draining yourself in a never ending goal. Like, an, it goes back to the first conversation. Like, I feel like that is a, a race. Like, you're on a hamster wheel all the time. And here's the carrot. Like, here you go. You need to get money. Oh, we added an extra dollar. We added an extra this. We added extra. Come on. Come on. And I'm like, when will it be, will it ever be enough? And, and that's fine. I'd rather move with, I'm going to do what I need to do. And an unlimited amount of money will come through at when I'm ready. Because maybe I'm yeah. not ready at the time that it was low. Or maybe at the time that it's not here. I'm, maybe I'm not ready and, but I'm being like, yo, I need all this money. That, that maybe I'm not ready for it. And I'm okay mm -hmm. saying, yo, I, I need to make what I have work and still serve somehow, some way. No, that's real. That's real. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, super, it's super important. I mean, I'll approach it from a business standpoint for a moment and just think about, yes, money is important. But you got to have a quality product. You know, it's funny. I actually sent something to Carl this morning about 
uh, a ton of money that was forgiven in student loan debt. And the main reason why the federal student loans were forgiven for that particular lump sum mm-hmm. was because the institutions that enrolled all of these students, and by the way, I think that number was over several billion dollars. It was a result of a lawsuit because the institutions that enrolled all of these students made false promises about job enrollment. You know, it's one, it was like DeVry and some of these other online institutions about, hey, just come with us any which way. Right. We'll help you find a job right. after. Well, it turns out that a lot of these people actually didn't deliver on their promise. And so they had all of these billions of dollars pulled back from them. So when you think about it, it's the same thing as saying, let me make sure I have a quality product because that's the only way I can guarantee staying in business, or that's the only way that I can guarantee that the promises that I'm making, I'm going to fulfill them on. So it it takes a level of discipline, sure, but it is something that a lot of us need to practice because you get jaded when you focus on the money. When that's the only thing that you're thinking about, or that's the only thing that you're focused on, you're not always going to make the best decision for the longevity of your brand, you're going to think about, well, what, what will pay me now? How much can I earn today? And that's not always in the best interest of the future or the growth of your brand or your business. When you zoom out a little bit and you play the long game and you can think about, okay, can I pick up on a trend? Can I pick up on an opportunity that I position myself early and just be the best and be the best and be consistent and apply all of these different criteria that we laid out here today? You'll be surprised how in just a short period of time, back in the day, time used to be 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years. Today's Mm. time is really three years. Mm. Yo, for real, like you can really blow up in three years. You can, you, can, you can see a lot of progress happen with some good quality work and consistency laid down for three years, sometimes less. But I'm just saying, it's the approach that you want to bring to the table and say, let me play the long game. Let me put out a quality product and really, and really deliver on my promises so that when people start listening and saying, so what are you talking about? They actually see that you're delivering on this promise that you made to do whatever it is you said you could do. And that's how I look at it. Delay the money, put out a quality product, or focus on, in this case, the the product is the content because it is a media as a podcast is similar to ours here. And that's how you start bringing in the funds long term. Sheesh. So people, go follow us everywhere. Nikki and Moose on all platforms. Once again, this is powered by Ecamm Live. Uh, If you want to try Ecamm Live, www.nickyandmoose.com slash Ecamm, E-C-A-M-M. Moose, final words. Man, stop allowing how people treat you to determine who you become. All right? There is, and it's the same thing as saying, I lied because they lied. I stole because they stole from me. I cheated because they cheated. All right. So you're allowing other people to determine who you become, but it's not who you are. So stop allowing other people to determine who you become. Stay who you are. Choose a different course of action. Maybe you respond differently, but don't allow their behaviors to to change who you become.